Oh. Man, I need your warning. Stay. Yes, YouTube, we're back. Uh, and we're outside. How friggin' good is this? It's a beautiful day here in the Kimberley. It's about 30 degrees, sun's shining, it's just stunning out here. And this may not seem like the perfect environment, but I see it as good a place as any to have a good old fashioned campfire roast. Now, today's roast is gonna be done with very, very different techniques to what you've probably seen before. Usually people chuck in their meat and everything into the, into the camp oven, throw it on, burn the shit out of it, get it really, really dry, and um, serve it to their mates after 400 beers. And um, look, I've eaten a few of them and I've even been pretty happy with them, again, after the aforementioned 400 beers. Um, but that's not what we're gonna do today. I like to do each roast a completely different way. So different pieces of meat mean different way of roasting it. For now, I'm gonna wait for these to sort of burn down and get a bit of coals happening. It's obviously windy, so I'm sorry if my audio is struggling. Um, All right, so what is the secret to a really, really moist roast? This is buttermilk boneless bird. So, <clears throat> I didn't really need to use the word bird, I just wanted a third B. What I did is I went to my local butcher and I said to him, can you please make me, can, you, can I please have a boneless chook? Now he leaves the wings, the, he leaves bones in the wings and that's it, he cuts the rest of them out. Uh, I don't know how much extra it costs, but like a whole bird was about $8.50. It wasn't expensive at all. Now, this is an absolute joy to work with. Yes, bones do add flavor, there's no doubt about it, but I have soaked this in buttermilk and salt for 24 hours, and I can tell you that this thing is not going to be lacking in flavor. Now, if you don't have buttermilk, there's a really easy way to make it, which is simply lemon juice. So you add two tablespoons of lemon juice to uh, one cup of normal full fat milk, um, and then I just add uh, two tablespoons of salt per cup. Use cooking salt or kosher salt if you're in the US. That defines this, the size of the grains and if you use normal table salt you're gonna over salt the crap out of it. So let's grab this big old beautiful boneless bird and drop him on my clean tailgate. Now cooking implement. Anyone who knows me, follows me for a while, knows I love my Camp Brian, my Oz Brian. I am gonna cook it in this basically to make sure that the veggies are in really good shape. And I'll explain that in a second. Chuck your big beautiful boneless bird in here. Now a lot of people will dry these off. Um, I find that because of the way we're gonna cook it, because we're not doing it in an oven, you don't actually need to. This will just drip off nicely. Uh, I used to use this at the lowest setting, so it's got different slots you can put in, put it at the lower setting, crush it down nice and hard. Tighten it up and that is beautiful, held nicely. Next, you set up your frame, whack him in there. Nice and solid, go get your chicken. And this is why I've picked the Osbry, because you can do this, have it next to this big hot fire that doesn't really have many coals yet, but you can hang it in front. Now what you want is about sort of maximum five seconds you can hold your hand there. So that should be about 110 degrees roughly and that will cook it beautifully over about two, two and a half hours. If you got to this point and you're thinking, oh, I can't do this in a recipe, this, is, this recipe is about as useful as Anne Frank's drum kit. Um, I don't have a camp bry. Well, number one, you should go get one, they're really good. And number two, don't worry, you can do this just by putting the same chook, dry it off a little bit, clean the buttermilk off, and chuck it in your camp oven. But it will never be quite as good as this whole meal because the veggies will get a little bit soggy. So what I recommend is if you have a second camp oven, do it on that. If you have just any kind of a grill basket and like a frame, maybe you try that. Um, hell, if you've got like a Weber or something, that'll even work. But this is definitely, for me, the ultimate. And yes, I'm cleaning this down with detergent because I don't want salmonella. So please don't comment telling me I need to clean it. I am. I do it all the time. I just think there's nothing more boring than videoing me cleaning stuff. While we're waiting for the chicken, I'm just going to get the veggies prepped because we may as well, it means we can relax. What I've got here is some spuds, some sweet potato, mustard seeds, 
bit of paprika, a bit of butter, and a bit of oil. And we are going to simply cut that stuff up and chuck it in the camp oven. I dropped my good knife off the boat. That's why I'm using this. I'm devastated. They're out of stock too. Yeah. Big glug of olive oil. Be generous, don't be healthy. That has now entirely covered the bottom. It's about two mil thick. Dump all those veggies in there. I haven't peeled anything and that's okay. Mustard seeds, you know, a tablespoon. Chuck them in. Smoky paprika. Smoky paprika I really like. I'll probably add a teaspoon of that. And then pepper, salt, and we are off like a bride's nighty. Let's put this on the fire. Oh, butter. Big knob of butter. Grab your hot plate. Chuck your hot plate on the fire off to the side. Now, using the flat grill here, because I don't actually want that much underneath heat. So that will add as a, act as a bit of a barrier between the heat and the camp oven. Let that go open, and I want 80% of my heat on top. And that, how you cook roast veggies. A few minutes ago, I went for a swim. Got stark naked, went and jumped in the water. There's no one here, it's bloody great. At this stage the vegetables have been on for about 15 minutes. Now I thought these vegetables would take about 45 minutes but the wind picked up and I came back and it just looked like the thing was roaring and it was bubbling and it was it looked like you know I should definitely check them. Now this will show you the importance of actually regularly checking your thing. Don't just follow the recipe some moron on YouTube has told you to follow with when it comes to campfire cooking because if you look at these they are pretty much done. I mean, they're even a little bit blackened in some bits. The bottom's not quite done, but I've still got probably an hour and a half to go on that chook. So all I'm gonna do is keep a very small number of coals on the lid and just leave it out of the way. Somewhere I'm not gonna burn my hand on it. Down at the chicken, it's still looking pretty sort of white. It's not browning yet. Um, that's fine, it's been on there for probably, I don't know, 40 minutes or something. Um, I'll probably turn it after an hour. And, uh, but it's cooking nice and slowly, which is exactly what you want. You want to render um, all the moisture should already be in there. So just keep at it. All right, it's been about nearly two hours. We're pretty much done. So you can see I've just browned it on one side, browned it on the other side. Now, the great thing about using a tool like this is that this is one of the main reasons I use them is as you saw I can hang it in front of the fire so I can go this side then I can go this side but then when I want to go end to end which is a big thing especially because I've got these two two big fat breasts here that on the end have no browning at all to do that it's a bit awkward because this handle will be in towards the fire so I'm just gonna pull this out and flip it around inside the frame That's insane. Oh, it's so good. Oh, wow. Seriously. <laughs> Turn that guy around a bit. Okay. You can come with me. Excuse the dodgy hand camera. Do it like this. In the back. Through the front. And then that big fat part in the end We'll get some nice heat on it. I'm gonna go and move some stuff around, grab my pretty crap welding gloves. I really need to get some new ones of these. Like this is, if anyone has any recommendations for like really, really, really good welding gloves, let's put a cap on it at a hundred dollars. Like that's an insane amount to pay for welding gloves. But um, for someone like me who uses them five times a week um, and goes through, like I wear through a pair of these in about, I don't know, six weeks, eight, 10 weeks, uh, because I, I, I seriously cook that much on fire. You don't see how much I cook on fire. Um, you see the episodes, you don't see 
me cooking something four times leading up to it to make this episode. So seriously, help me out. I want some really, really good fire gloves and I'll let you know if I find some um, because yeah, that, that, that would be a game changer for me. Anyway, let's go put this bloody thing on the fire. And I'm gonna take this guy off and rest it. Okay. Oh, it looks so good. Rest him there. Fred's buggered. What's your mate? You're looking for little drips of chicken water. Chicken is Fred's favorite food. Now, <clears throat> that's been resting for about uh, 10 minutes. This have just pulled off the fire and it is looking primo. Oh yeah. I get asked all the time, how do you clean this thing? That's really easy. I'm just gonna go and throw it back on the fire. Straight in the fire, we'll burn all those bits of skin off. Uh, if I really need to, I'll just give it a quick wipe with a wire brush. I've heard of people like scrubbing this thing underwater for ages, waste of time. Just get it hot, burn it off and give it a wipe. Okay, the party piece of a boneless chook. The fact that I can cut wherever the hell I want and it will be all good. Pull those wings off, I'm gonna definitely have a chomp on them in my hands, but then the rest of it, I mean, it's just chop where you feel. Something I actually forgot to do, and it's really annoying me, is I wanted to have some greens in this, I wanted to have some broccolini, but I got distracted on the way out and forgot to do it. So a little bit of a bed of veggies in one of these little guys. A few bits of chicken. Holy crap, that looks so good. I mean, the presentation is crap. There's no, um, no greens or anything. So let's have a go. That chicken, you know when you get a Woolies chook, or like a supermarket uh, rotisserie chook, you know how moist that is? This is even more moist than that, but it doesn't taste fake. It just tastes like, you know, beautiful, salty, not too salty chicken, and it is, that's just next level. That's like, that's the best roast chook I've ever made. Please do this. The skin is like, I wanna book a room with this skin. All right, veg. Delicious. Sweet, bit of crunch. Mm, mm. This is, oh, I'm gonna go and just destroy this. Holy shit, so good. Oh, yes.